didn't really get much chance to have a play on this yesterday because by the time they put it back together, I was cutting sunflowers and we had a family meal. So you might see High Vis Liz now. You could do a spot the High Vis Liz special now, couldn't you? <laughs> Ted, I was going for a family meal. Look at this in the toilets. Actually, I'll take a picture. That made me chuckle. If you get one of them to like shoot pigeons, it'd be ideal, wouldn't it? Uh, I don't think you're supposed to be doing that. Anyway, I'm going to take it round to the workshop. I just don't know whether you can see, but that is a different colour. Fiberglass has faded, so if someone said if you, if you warm it up, it might go back to red. So we'll have a go and see if we can get it to go back to red, because it's more of a churro red than a orangey red. I wonder what pulls the best, that or this. Anyway, it's got what they call a turbo clutch in it. And also, I'll just show you this. Someone has extended the spool lever so that you can reach them better by putting that on the end. It's a good idea. But yeah, you put it in. So let's put it in forwards now. So uh, if we take our foot off the clutch, you can press the brake and the tractor's held. And when you rev it, it sets off. That's um, it's a ZF transmission and what they call a fluid clutch. So it's two propellers spinning in a bath of oil. And the more you, you rev it, the, le the more resistance you get in the oil and it, it moves. The what they um, put in the early fence as well, same transmission. So they're also impossible to stall these tractors. I personally think it sounds better with the exhaust on, to be honest. So when you back off for some reason, I might try changing that glass as well. Got the blow lamp, got the front grill. Let's see what happens. Wish me luck, I don't want to melt it. Not got a lighter, so I'm going to try. Well, I'm not going to try it because I know it works because we don't have the time. So I'm going to light it with the welder. Turn the gas off, it's leaking backwards. It's lucky, and he burnt my hand if I'd have had all of it. There we go, we're in business now. It's not leaking back. Look at that. I don't think it's working. are attacking someone in the shed but I don't know what. Well I've just found some armrests from here 1455. Don't know what it was but they've gone now. Yeah, it was in the workshop and I could hear a load of banging and stuff was hitting the side of that shed. I went round there's a load of magpies but I don't know what they were after but can't see anything they've flown off but there was a hell of a racket going on until I walked round. I've decided that I'm not going to do this today because I'm going to need a proper glass scraper to get all that like mess of silicon off. So rather than persevere with a Stanley knife blade and cut my hands after I've just nearly burnt them anyway, I'll, I've ordered a proper scraper off Amazon. So I'll take that out and do that properly. Do it one night or maybe next week or something. I think that red did come up better now. It doesn't look as bad. And I also, I can't find the other half of my polisher because really I want to polish this red so it looks like it does where that stick has been taken off, so it's a bit cloudy there. 
and well all over obviously it's cloudy but where the stick has been it's not you can see it's sticking out there so i can't find the rest of my polisher so i've ordered a new kit, polisher kit as well and we'll we'll try and get the red back to its former glory someone's made this toolbox for the front quite thick steel as well but they've done a really good job of it so i think it needs to stay on but originally you see the weights that have been there i don't know whether it looked good with a set of weights on if anyone knows any cheap case weights let me know just do we making it going a little bit faster because we're not sure if it's a bit slow for the track to run because it seems to only do 26 or 27k which is a bit unfortunate quiz time how do you open the bonnet i've been messing for about 10 minutes i can't get these panels off i can't find any like hidden levers or latches i believe that that folds forwards when the exhaust's not on but i can't find anything to move it and it can't be that difficult because there must be a dipstick under there as well but it's just all solid so if anyone knows how you open the bonnet on a 14.55 or a 12.55 let me know I've got a marker pen to mark the gear stick up but just listen to how sweet that engine sounds it just sounds so smooth anyway the numbers have worn off this gear stick so we need to draw them on so we've basically got high then we've got low and then we've got reverse there we go you can buy a gear stick but it's about 80 quid so sharpie marker will do for now I forgot to put the header away yesterday so I'll put it away today and then I'm gonna take these tools back to the main workshop we used to fix the 1455 and then I'd better put some fuel in this as well. This is the wheat behind the yard, I hope you can see. So we've obviously got a tram line here, which was a mistake because they went every 12 metres. And then we've got another tram line here, which again the drill zone by mistake. But when we come over here, we look like we've got two tram lines next to each other. Now this is a tram line that the, that the drill drilled. If you look closely at this one, this runs at an angle to the rows. If I zoom in, you can see the rows over there, not in line. So this is either where the sprayer drove or combine when we cut the field of beans. And because it was a bit damp when we cut it, the tram line the combine obviously compacted the ground and when we come in and we had the fault on the drill where we we had it taking its own pressure off by mistake it never buried the seed here so there's a few little bits growing inside but it's basically bare earth anyway this, this slugs have soon loosened it now you can sort of slug sorry the worms you can see all this kind of like worm cast and these bonfires the worms have made but that is a mistake so when you stand out the back of the yard it's really annoying because you just see these four lines through it but then if you go over here a little bit where the combine last drove for some reason it's nowhere near as bad unless it was because it was a headland and it got a bit of overlap i don't know but either way it's like that anyway everyone says about 25 centimeter rows well this is a 25 centimeter row now can you see it's nearly touched in the middle and it's only october now i've got some clover seed in the yard and we're going to try and stitch clover in between these rows to see if we can get away we're using less fertilizer because it's so expensive so if it's dry this week we're going to get on move the drill over with the rtk so that's like the gps that's dead accurate and then hopefully in between these rows here we'll stitch some clover i hope that makes sense it's windy so i they got me coat over me had to stop the wind I've just been moving the MB track and I've put all the tractors in the line, all the classics. Anyway, everyone seems to ask what that box is. Well, it's the earth cleaner. So basically that's the air filter, sucks the air in, goes for a filter, then into the engine below. So that's what it is on the MB track. This needs a really good valet. But it's actually got the manuals with it as well, which is probably quite rare for a tractor this age. So parts book as well, so that lives in the passenger seat, little document holder which is one of them jobs that you can't put in with one hand when you're filming. There you go. Press stud that up, job done. And then it folds down. And if you don't have it pressed stud up when you fold it down, 
the manuals fall on the floor like they just were then. But yeah, that's well ahead of its time. If anyone's noticed, that isn't seed corn. It's fertilizer and the bag is ripped, so we need to put on a new bag. Anyway, I've just lined these up now in the shed. So I think we've got like 83, 87. I think that's is that 90 something. But you think that's a small tractor, the MB track, but it's actually quite big compared to the 1455. And then the 1455's only a little bit smaller than the John Deere. Everyone keeps spotting this in the background of the videos. It is a really early Toyota Land Cruiser. And it's a singer, I think it's the guy from the Lars that sung There She Goes. Anyway, there was something wrong with the ball joints on it, so Andy was going to fix it for him. But they can't get the parts for months, so he's just kind of abandoned it in the way. But yeah, it's a really early Land Cruiser. It used to be yellow. It used to be that colour yellow. Anyway, it's been repainted grey. So I don't know how long it's here for, but it doesn't excite me. It's got a tractor. Just out of power cut, when we get a power cut, the boiler doesn't like stopping at full bore which is obviously what happens when you get a power cut. So then you get smoke out the chimney, whereas most of the time you don't see any smoke coming out the chimney because it burns it that clean. Quick reset and it should sort itself out now and start burning clean again. There's always a few questions about how I've managed to buy all this stuff. Well, little simple graph, income, views, Bateman from YouTube. So people watching the channel in six months generate enough monthly income to buy a Bateman. It's obviously people are still watching the channel and finding the, the daily content interesting as well. And the income is growing. So this bit here is what we call the classic tractor curve. So I've been able to buy the 14.55 and the MB track in this bit. And I'm looking at this quad track or this, I said 7.8.10 yesterday. It's actually not 7.8.10, it's a 7.7.10. But we could always change the stickers. So this is the growth now of the channel so if you imagine that six months could generate two hundred thousand pounds worth of hp over five or six years this bit here could generate the same really in the next six months which equates to quite a lot of ex you know exciting classic tractors so that's the plan so this money's coming into the farm so we may as well use it to get some interesting stuff and then hopefully start a museum but also if we have some open days there's plenty for people to look at as well it was fairly unanimous yesterday that, that the John Deere should be purchased before the quad track. Now, with the quad track going to be there in a month or two, when I can afford it, I don't know. But obviously, it seems a no brainer to get this, this not a 7, 8, 7, 7, 10. And park in the shed next to Andrew's 49.55, perhaps. Anyway, it's also Lee White's birthday today, so happy birthday to him. And then I've got to say thank you to everyone that's watching because you're watching. I've been able to start collecting these cool tractors and we can do that one up, polish that one up, and have a shed full of nice machinery that people can come and have a look at. And then the long-term plan in a few years, maybe it'll be get a nice shed, fill it with tractors, heat it, and have, you know, open every weekend as some sort of museum or whatever. So thanks to everyone that's watching because you're paying for these and you're paying for that Bateman out there. So it's brilliant. And I really appreciate you watching. Anyway, if you want to watch another video, it's over there. If you want to subscribe, it's over there. And I'll see you tomorrow when hopefully it'll be a little bit dry and we might get some field work done again. But today it's been too windy and too wet to do any spraying or anything.